So we're going to do a, a second example of calculating power flow on a three node network. This network has two generators. There's a generator at node one, a generator at node two, and then there's a load at node three. In this network, the line connecting node one to node three has resistance R, the line connecting node one to two has resistance R, and the line connecting node two to node three has resistance 2R. So the resistance on line two to three is twice as high as the resistance on either of the other two lines. So the first step is to calculate the distribution factors for G1. Okay, so first we're going to do the distribution factor on line 1 to 3 from G1. And so the numerator in this is going to be the inverse of the resistance of the path that goes from node 1 to node 3. Okay, so this is one path with resistance R. So that's going to go in the numerator over here. And then in the denominator, we're going to have the sum of the inverse resistances for both paths. So the resistance of the direct path from 1 to 3 is 1 over R. And the resistance of the indirect path that goes from node 1 to node 2 down to node 3 has total resistance 3R. So the second term in the denominator of these distribution factor equations is going to be 1 over 3R. And we're going to get 3 quarters. Now we're going to calculate the distribution factor on line 1, 2 from G1. And so the numerator is going to be the total resistance of the long path that goes from 1 to node 2 to node 3, which is 3R. So the inverse of that is 1 over 3R. And then in the denominator, we're going to have 1 over R plus 1 over 3R. And we're going to get 1 fourth there. And last, we're going to do the distribution factor of line 2 to 3 for G1, which, because line 2 to 3 is on that same indirect path as line 1 to 2, we're going to have the same distribution factor on line 2, 3 for G1 as we did on line 1, 2 for G1. So we're going to have 1 over 3R divided by... 1 over R plus 1 over 3R, and we're going to get 1 quarter. So the next step is to calculate the distribution factors for G2. And from G2, some of the power injected at G2 is going to go directly from node 2 to node 3. So this is the direct path, which is going to have resistance 2R. And some of the power injected at G2 is going to go from node 2 through node 1 to node 3, so this indirect path which is going to have total resistance 2R. Okay, so now we can calculate the distribution factors. So the distribution factor on line 1 to 3 from G2, for that in the numerator, we're going to have the inverse of the total resistance of the path that contains line 1, 3, 
So this is this indirect path with resistance 2R. And then in the denominator, we're going to have the sum of the inverse resistances on both paths. So we have the indirect path with resistance 1 over 2R. And we have the direct path, which also has resistance 1 over 2R. And so when we work this out, we're, we're going to get a half. The distribution factor on line 1 to 2 from G2. To calculate this, the first thing we need to remember is that power going from node 2 to node 1 is in what we had defined as the negative direction. So there's going to be a negative sign in front of the distribution factor. And remember that on these long indirect paths, both of the lines that make up the path are going to have the same distribution factor in magnitude. So the distribution factor for line 1, 2 is going to have the same magnitude as the distribution factor for line 1, 3, except there's going to be a negative sign in front of it. So to see how that works out, we can write out the whole formula. So in the numerator, we're going to have 1 over 2R. And in the denominator, we're going to have 1 over 2R plus 1 over 2R. And here we're going to get negative a half. So the distribution factor on line 1, 2 is the same magnitude as line 1, 3, just has a negative sign. And then finally, we're going to calculate the distribution factor on line 2, 3 from G2. Okay, and so in the numerator here, we're going to have the inverse of the resistance of the path that goes from two directly from 2 to 3. So that's 1 over 2R. And then in the denominator, we're going to have the same thing as in the other distribution factors. And again, we're going to get 1 half. So the last step is we're going to use the distribution factors and the assumed outputs of the two generators to calculate power flows. So in this case, we're going to assume that generator 1 produces 50 megawatts, and generator 2 also produces 50 megawatts. So we're going to use our flow equation here, which is that the flow on line JK is equal to the distribution factor on line JK from G1 times the output of G1 plus the distribution factor on line JK from G2 times the output of G2. So we're going to take our outputs for G1 and G2, our distribution factors that we've already calculated, and we're going to calculate the flows for each of the three lines. So the flow on line 1 to 3 is going to be equal to the distribution factor on line 1, 3 from generator 1, which we had said was 3 quarters. times 50, the output of G1, plus the distribution factor on line 1 to 3 from G2, which we had said was 1 half, times 50. And so when we add this together, we're going to get 62 and 1 half megawatts. Now for line 1 to 2, We're going to take the distribution factor on line 1 to 2 from G1, which we had said was a quarter, times 50. Then the distribution factor on line 1 to 2 from G2, which, remember, was equal to minus 1 half, because the flow in this case is going from node 2 to node 1, which we defined as the negative direction. So this is going to be equal to minus a half times 50, 
And when we multiply this out, we're going to get minus 12 and a half megawatts. Okay, and remember what that minus sign means. It doesn't mean that we have negative energy. All that minus sign means is that it's telling us that 12 and a half megawatts is flowing on this line, but the direction is going from node 2 to node 1. So remember, don't get freaked out by the minus sign. That just tells us the direction that the power is flowing. So now we'll do the flow on line 2 to 3. So the distribution factor on line 2 to 3 from generator 1, we had said was 1 fourth times 50, plus the distribution factor on line 2 to 3 from generator 2, which we would said was 1 half times 50. And so when we multiply this out, we get 37 and a half megawatts. So in summary, what we get is the total flow on node from node 1 to node 3 is 62 and a half megawatts. The total flow from node 2 to node 3 is 37 and a half megawatts. And the total flow on line 1, 2 is going from node 2 to node 1. And the magnitude of that flow is 12 and a half megawatts.